I observed the hills being hit by artillery and the flare bursts. I remember very clearly my thoughts as I looked to my right or to my left. You can see the steel helmets of the other guys. It reminded me of the war movies I had seen as a child. It was almost like being in a movie, except now, my life was at stake. America's greatest heroes are United States Army infantry soldiers. The lives these men have led reflect the most heroic events in American history. The new National Infantry Museum and Soldier Center is dedicated to telling these stories. These are remarkable tales of bravery, compassion, endurance, and self-sacrifice. The $100 million museum is a technological marvel Thousands of theatrical lights, hundreds of hidden speakers, and hours of motion picture footage all combine to transport you to the battlefields you only began to imagine in history class. Enter the museum and you're greeted by the sound of distant thunder. Suddenly you realize that you've encountered the last 100 yards. And it's not thunder at all. The last 100 yards ramp was built specifically to honor the infantry soldier. This has turned out to be the signature attraction for this museum. The last 100 yards is the infantry. All of us who have served in the infantry know that once you get within 100 yards of the enemy, you have to shift your air power someplace else, you have to shift your artillery, and as you walk up the ramp from the Revolutionary War on, you see a soldier and a bayonet and a rifle and it hasn't changed very much. So when you get to Afghanistan today, the guy kicking in the door was the same soldier fighting in Redoubt Number 10 in the Revolutionary War. As we pass the soldiers in the deserts of Afghanistan and Iraq, we see how an infantry right, soldier's career assault. starts. I will assist. Basic in training, there, Fort Benning, Georgia. Morning runs at the crack of dawn. The Benning Gallery demonstrates what it takes to mold young men into soldiers. From early mobile firepower to a comprehensive display of rifles and sidearms, this gallery surrounds the visitor with interactive displays that invite your participation. Step into the rifle range and test your skills with the same rifle simulators the Army uses to train troops. Now you're ready to explore the individual galleries that illustrate each major period of infantry history. Troops are loading onto ships to fight in the Spanish-American War as you enter the International Stage Gallery. It's 1898. The battleship Maine has been sunk in Havana Harbor. A 10-week war would ensue in the Caribbean and the Pacific. In the summer of 1914, the Great War erupts in Europe. You'll see it from a soldier's perspective in a World War I trench. Bullets whiz overhead as you peer through a periscope. Fascinating war artifacts and armaments are displayed at every turn. The family gallery always attracts a crowd, especially younger visitors. This unique space recognizes the sacrifices made by wives, children, and parents of soldiers. Young military family members can dress up like dad and climb into the back of a Bradley fighting vehicle, powered by their own imaginations. In the center of the Grand Hall, a soft glow radiates. Shimmering glass walls pay tribute to the soldiers who have received the highest award for bravery in combat, the Medal of Honor. One of the exhibits that really inspired me was the exhibit showing the Medal of Honor winners especially seeing people that I actually recognize the names. For instance, the two Delta Force snipers uh, in the movie Black Hawk Down, where you're actually viewing and reading their names off, it really shows that there's so much pride and history that goes behind the Medal of Honor winners. That is, without a doubt, one of the more touching and emotional parts of the museum for, I think, anyone who passes through there. The World Power Gallery is the largest and most popular exhibit space in the museum. It chronicles the years 1920 to 1947 and helps the visitor gain a deep understanding of the events leading up to the Second World War. Step inside the World at War Theater. As the lights dim, the huge globe spins and comes to life. 
Animated maps and rare war films from the European and Pacific fronts make complex battles and strategies understandable. Intricate handmade dioramas with incredible detail depict the conditions in which infantrymen had to fight. War artifacts from Nazi Germany, like this singed copy of Mein Kampf, are displayed for close inspection. Compelling oral histories from actual World War II soldiers add to the realism of the gallery. South Korea, 1950. The winter was one of the most severe ever experienced by American fighting troops. Temperatures as low as minus 30 degrees. Soldiers, many still in summer uniforms, scrounged anything they could find to burn just to stay warm in the snow. It was bitter cold. We were poorly equipped for winter. Our sleeping bags were the wool blanket mummy bags. We cut the bottoms off, cut holes for our arms, and wore them until Parkers were issued. The Cold War gallery makes the soldiers' hardships almost tangible. Authentic uniforms, sidearms, and snow camouflage will rekindle many war veterans' memories. In contrast to the bitter cold in Korea, the Vietnam War was fought in steamy jungles. Dense, almost impenetrable tree canopies hide the enemy. Move slowly, keep low. Enemy gunfire may erupt at any moment. You know, my first uh, impression of this whole museum was just an awesome undertaking. Every soldier, no matter what he did, has a story. In the museum, you have an opportunity to read them. Not only people that were prisoners, people that were shot up and evacuated, but for me, the, the most impressive thing to me is the helicopters that landed, troops and picked up troops. Because in 1967, I was hit with a claymore on an ambush. And uh, what saved my life was that the medevac was there, picked me up and got me to Tainan Hospital. Many vets are intrigued by the combat locator. Enter the data you remember, perhaps the name of a village. Computers search thousands of files, and your battle history is displayed. Young enlisted men and women are often drawn to the sole superpower. The Gulf War Theater details Saddam Hussein's ill-conceived invasion of Kuwait. Here, the visitor can view the most technologically advanced weapons in the world. A guided missile glides overhead. Night vision goggles penetrate through the darkness. The U.S. infantry owns the night. The thing that impressed me the most about the Infantry Museum was the fact of how well they depicted all the wars, starting from the Civil War to the current war in Afghanistan and Iraq. They did a great job of showing what the soldiers go through and how our army has grown from the Civil War to what it's become now. All the soldiers that were in the exhibits all looked just like we do now. The uniforms were, were perfect, the way they moved and the way the uniforms fit them and especially their gear. The exhibits were probably the more realistic exhibits I've seen in museums in quite a while. Graduation. The car tags in the parking lot read like an atlas. Proud family members have come from across the country to see their sons graduate from basic training. As they pass the review stands, the young soldiers are treading on sacred ground. Rich soil from the Battle of Yorktown, sand from the beaches of Normandy, blinding dust from LZ X-ray. All were sprinkled across the field to inspire those who would follow in their footsteps. Every one of those soldiers brings at least five visitors. On Thursdays and Fridays, we have a thousand car parking lot. There's no place to park here at all. They park on adjoining roads and on the grass. It has been a rip-roaring success. The parade field connects to the museum by way of the Heritage Walk. Underneath the flags of 50 states, Granite pavers are inscribed with the names of beloved soldiers. Visitors are invited to make a lasting tribute to their own military family members, and all proceeds benefit the museum. The museum's 200-acre campus includes World War II Company Street, 
These historic buildings have quickly become the favorite gathering spot for military reunions. Veterans and their families share stories and breakfast in an authentic World War II mess hall. The headquarters and sleeping quarters on this site were used by General George S. Patton just before he deployed to North Africa. Infantry soldiers are special. They've endured more combat casualties than all other branches of the military combined. They've also earned more than half of all the nation's highest decorations for valor, the Medal of Honor. Finally, we have a place to honor their endurance, their courage, and their selfless sacrifice at this National Museum. <laughs>